It's Sunday night, and we're talking about the doctrine of the devil. That's at least half of the Bible. The other half is the doctrine of Christ, or the doctrine of God. And these two are in complete opposition to one another. They oppose one another. Doctrine means instruction, or it means to teach. Actually, it, it has to do with teaching. When you learn instruction, you're being taught, aren't you? So, there's two doctrines or two teachings in the Bible. The word teach is the word manthano in the Greek. Well, I've got my pens messed up here. The word teach is the word manthano. Or to learn... Excuse me, teach is mathetuo, M-A-T-H-E-T-E-U-O. Mathetuo, manthano, means to learn. And a learner is a disciple. And that is the word mathetes. And these are all forms of the same words, mathetes. They are morphemes. Morphemes, they are word shapes that come from the same word. Morphe, morphe means to shape, shape. And morphe is shaping. Remember we talked about whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed. Conformed is the word sumorphos. When you see some form of the word morpho, morphos or morphos, you see morphe, or you see these words, manthano or mathetuo, math, manthano, mathetuo, or mathetase, these are all related in meaning to one another. So the doctrine of the devil is God, is his instruction or you learn the doctrine of the devil and you're taught the doctrine of the devil and you, and you learn his doctrine and you become a disciple of Satan or you learn God's doctrine. The word doctrine, didache, didache, that's the common word or didascalia means instruction. And the Bible teaches continually that fools despise the instruction of God. And you have God's, God's doctrine, God's instruction, God's teaching. God's teaching, you have learning from God, and if you're learning from God, then you're, God's, then you're a disciple of Christ, you are, a, you are a learner of Christ, and the Bible says you have to have a daily cross, daily cross, in order to be a learner than Luke 14, 27. If you're learning, and you cannot, if you look at the Word, anytime you're looking at one Word, it'll take you to many other words. If you're, if you're learning, if you're learning something, are you going to obey it? If you learn that the stove is hot when you're a little kid, you're not going to keep touching the stove, are you? If you find out that if you jump off of a, I used to jump off of my grandmother's garage and swing like Tarzan. Uh, we went to the movie and saw Johnny Weissmuller's Tarzan. We would swing, find some old grapevine outside my grandmother's house in Bowie, Texas, and we'd swing off the vine yelling, ah, ah, ah. And uh, this is back in 1946, 47, 48. And if you, if you find out that if you jump off of a garage, you hurt your feet, or it don't feel too good, and I used to like to jump off of high things. I used to like to jump off of a garage just to see if I could land and get up and feel okay about it. Did you ever do that? I just want to jump off of the top of something. I just like doing it, and the higher I could jump off and land on my feet when I was eight, seven, eight, and nine, I thought that was great. And I'd swing around grapevines and do stuff like that. But I found out that if you get real high, if you get too high, you're going to get hurt. I learned that. So I obey, I would obey not jumping off of something too high. Garage is okay. I could jump and land it. And gosh, I was a skinny little kid. What could I break? 
But anyway, you obey what you learn. I keep saying, if you learn your multiplication tables, you do obey them, don't you, through life? Or do you quit obeying them somewhere and say, well, I learned that, but I'm not going to obey that. I'm going to become a, an engineer, a structural engineer, but I'm not going to obey the multiplication tables, and I'm not going to obey uh, subtracting and adding. Well, if you don't, you're going to build a building that looks like this. You know, it's going and it's going to finally topple down, and it's not going to work. You have to obey the things you learn. If it's truth, you have to obey it, don't you? So you obey the teachings and the instructions, either of God's doctrine or of the devil's doctrine. You'll obey one of the two, and we find out that the devil's doctrine has some consequences. God's doctrine has consequences in the flesh, doesn't it? You tell people truth, they persecute you. You tell them Christmas is pagan, Easter is pagan, and God doesn't love everybody, and, and uh, you have to take your cross and die daily, death to self, self-denial, and they'll get mad and they'll go into a flurry and just go into a rage at you. That's the consequences. Tribulation is the consequences of believing God. That's, notice how what you obey is going to bring some kind of a consequence. Consequence. Won't it? It'll bring some kind of consequence. Now, there is, a, there is an eternal reward for obeying the doctrine or the instruction of God. But that's not here and now. That's later. Uh, reminds me of the verses that say over there in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, when you want to read this, this is... This is what happens to us. This is one of the consequences of living in truth. Look here in 2 Corinthians. This is one of the consequences. You're either going to have problems here in this life or you're going to have problems in eternity. Now, you might be a vessel of wrath over here with Satan and you might live a smooth life and you might live a hard life, but still your eternal consequences are the same. Now, here's the consequences of learning truth over here in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I think of these things here in verse 17 of chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. For our light affliction, our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Now, Paul is saying all the tribulation and trial that you go through in this life is but for a moment. The 70 years, or 80 years, or 85 years, 85 years, that's a moment in time with God. And usually you won't witness all those years. You may witness from, you start growing at 20, you don't get strong till you get to 40 or 45, and then you start witnessing and you catch lots of flack, and you kind of back off a lot, and then you get back on, you back off some more, and then as you get older, you quit backing off, and you start standing for truth, and then people think you're a nut, and they think you're a wacko because you don't believe in free will, you don't believe in Christmas, you don't believe in Easter, and you don't believe God loves everybody, and they'll think you're a nut. That's the consequences for believing the truth. That's why Paul and Jesus and Peter, they would all talk about suffering tribulation. Yea, and all that will of God in Christ Jesus. If you live godly, you're obeying God. Those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's what the Bible says. Well, that is tribulation and persecution and fire and trials. That is the consequence in this life of standing for truth. That is an absolute necessity for every person. You say, do I have to suffer as much as, as much as other people? No. Do I have to witness as much as you, Jim? No, because I haven't always witnessed this much. I mean, I started off real antsy and, oh, I love Jesus. I'm going to go out and win the world for Christ. Well, I slowed down, cut back off the track, went off out in the world, lived for self. God beat me up and caused me to be willing to come back and walk the straight and narrow for him. And that's something God has to cause you to do. 
Now, when you're obedient to the doctrine of the devil, the Bible says, Know you not, in the 16th chapter of Romans, look over there in the 16th chapter. Now, you will obey a doctrine. You'll obey an instruction. Look here in Romans 16, uh, Romans 6, not 16. Romans 6, 6th chapter of Romans. And he says something, something similar. Now, when you see the word obey, think, teach, think, instruction, think, learn, because you're going to learn, you're going to obey. You're going to be taught a, a doctrine and you're going to obey. Well, think faith. Think faith. Faith obeys God. Faith cometh by hearing. Here, here is the word akuo. And that means to understand. Well, if you understand something, you do it. The word obey is the word hoop. A-K-O-U-O in the Greek. And hupakuo means where you hear. It means to hear under. Or to be subordinate. Now, if you, are a, if you are a subordinate at the company you work in, then you've got a superior uh, person telling you what to do, instructing you. Do you have to obey your boss? Well, sure you do. Yes, you have to obey him or you get fired or he's going to penalize you or lay you off for several days. So when you think, obey, think, hear, think, think, obey, and think faith. So faith has to do with being taught. Faith has to do with instruction. Faith has to do with learning. Faith has to do with all of these things. And faith comes by hearing, and we're saved by grace through faith, and faith works. Well, if we're working and doing works of, we're doing good works, and you have to do good works, not in order to be saved. God births his family by his will. He births us. He births us by his will. Of his own will begat he us. We're born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, if you birth a baby in your family, does it have to obey you? Well, yeah, think baby when you think obey. Sure, it has to obey you. You're the father, aren't you? And the word father in the Hebrew is the word ab, and it means to decide or desire. Desire. So God has desired and decided who his children will be. So if you think of birth, and birth comes from God, and we have to be born again, born again has to do with Obeying God because you cannot be birthed by God and Him not cause you to obey. We are His workmanship. We are His poema. As I've said before, that is the common word. It comes from the word poio, P-O-I-E-O. -E and poio means to work or do. And... It is not the common word toil or work. The common word is ergon. That word means to toil or labor. To toil or labor. Poeo means to work or do something in a beautiful manner or to do some work that is like a painting or like a mosaic. And the Bible says we are his workmanship. And workmanship, poema, P-O-I-E, P-O-I-E, po poema comes from the word poeo. So if we are his workmanship, then we are, he picks up a paintbrush and paints us on the scale of this life. So we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, 
We are created to do good works. Not just works, but good works. Good is the word agathos. And it means beneficial. So when you're thinking of what is agathos, that is what God is doing in us. That's the same word, Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good, for agathos, to them that love God, and to them who are the called according to His purpose. So when you think of love, you have to think of obeying God. Or you have to think of poema, because these things work together for good to them that love God. Good connects with love, but that word is agape, and agape is walking in the commandments of God. 2 John 6, this is love, this is agape, that we walk after His commandments. Is walking in God's commandments obeying God? I was raised in a Baptist church, in a Baptist preacher's home. And boy, if there's one thing the Baptists don't believe in is don't you ever mention works. Man, look, we're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, 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 not of works. Don't ever mention that, Jimmy. And then never go to verse 10. I've never, I've heard my father quote Ephesians 2, 8 a thousand times if I've heard him once. That or more. And I've never heard my father quote verse 10. Never heard him deal with verse 10. Never heard him even imply verse 10 of Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you, this is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you saved through faith. But faith is obedience, isn't it? And that not of yourselves. Faith is the gift of God. It is not of works of self-righteousness, not of works of ritual, lest any man should boast in his own works. That's what it's saying. And then it says we are his workmanship. Right after it says not of works, they sounded like parrots. All those independent Baptists around. Not of works, not of works, ah, not of works, not of works, not of works. I don't know why they didn't all buy them a parrot and teach them. Not of works, not of works. Has anybody been in a Baptist church that they would say that? You're not allowed to talk about works. Oh, they'd talk about godly and holy. If you're godly and holy, you cease to work for self and you do the works of God. What is that, Jim? Doing the things that he said, agonizing over sin, sharing the truth with people, and being persecuted for it? Well, I can't do what you do. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to do what you're able to do, and that's all. And then I get to lay down and be lazy. I'm going to make excuse. No. I've told people, they say, I can't remember all those Greek words. Don't remember them all. Learn three or four of them and use them. With your friends. Use one on your friends. I'll tell you the easiest thing to remember talking to people. If there's, look at the things that the world has twisted and perverted. The world is perverted. They perverted just nearly every word in the Bible. They don't have any idea what any of it means. And we're talking about the doctrine of the devil is a perversion. It's perverted scripture is what it is. The doctrine of the devil is not uh, something with horns and a tail and some vampire out of a movie and comes up out of a grade and you have to drive a stake in his heart. That's not the doctrine of the devil. That's a fairy tale. Well, it is the doctrine of the devil, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's foolishness. The doctrine of the devil keeps Scripture involved. It just twists it. That's all it does. Now... You have to, when you're thinking of obedience to God, you're thinking about agape. You can tie nearly every word in the Bible with the word obey or with the word teach. Instruction, teach, learn, uh, to shape us into the likeness of Jesus so that we will obey, we will learn, and that has to do with obedience to God, doing the good works of God when we love God. And agape is walking his commandments, and that's obeying God. Has anybody heard preachers say, 
we're not saved by works. We're not saved by works, but boy, they get upset when you talk about doing what's right. Has anybody ever heard that, Ken? They'll just say, you're not supposed to. This works has nothing to do with our salvation. That's like saying, me obeying my mother has nothing to do with whether I'm going to be born or not. You're already born. You have to obey, period. It's kind of getting things. You can't obey God in order to be born, can you? Because you, what can you do before you're born? Huh? Can you do anything before you're born? How can you obey God in order to be born? This is where the not of works people, not of works is true, but it's not of works of self-righteousness, and it's not of rituals. It's not rituals. It's not performing a ritual, and it's not being self-righteous. I keep saying you can have two people. You can have this man and this woman. And they can go out and give this man over here a bag of groceries, and this man can be doing it to be seen of man, and this woman can be doing it because God said to do it. And she won't be looking for glory, and he will. Every time somebody does something, I don't care if it's charity. They're doing it to be seen of man. When God is not alive in a man's heart, we're talking about the doctrine of the devil. The doctrine of the devil is just self. Some shall depart from faith in the latter times, there in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, and they'll give heed to seducing spirits, seducing. They'll, they'll depart from death to self, daily cross, Christmas is pagan, Easter is pagan. When you believe God, faith is belief, and when you believe God, you believe the words of the Scripture. You can't own a Bible and walk around like so many people and say, I believe God. Well, you believe what's in that Bible, don't you? Well, yeah, I believe it. Do you believe for whom he did for no? He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. Well, uh, well, it, the Bible don't mean that. Well, could I have your Bible and show it to you? No, I'm not. Have you have anybody do that to you? I've tried to show people verses. Now, no, I'm not going to look at that. That's because their minds are twisted. America is perverted. The doctrine of the devil is a perversion. It takes the scripture and says, oh, God don't mean that. Isn't that what Satan said in the garden? God don't mean that. He don't mean you'll die. He says... He means everything he says. He means you have to obey God. He means if you belong to me, I will whip you within an inch of your life. I scourge every son I receive. This, I've been told, well, God, you don't have to crucify self. Well, then Luke 9, 23 is a lie. All the verses talking about death to self and daily cross and self-denial is a lie if you don't have to crucify self. I believe America is just completely in a perverted state. I've got something here. I believe America's brainwashed. I believe everybody has redefined everything in the Bible. And the reason I believe that is I believe we're close to the end of time. And the Bible teaches that at the end of time, the great apostasy will be here. Men will fall away from faith and they'll give heed to seducing spirits. That word seducing, plenos, means an imposter. They'll give, so they'll give heed to imposters. To be an imposter, you have to pass yourself off as something you're not. You have to be a hypocrite, don't you? H-U-P-O-K-R-I-T-E-S. Hypocrites. That's what Jesus called the Pharisees. It was an actor. It was a stage actor wearing a mask. Hi. How are you, sir? It's wonderful. I went into my doctor's office the other day. And I've got all these T-shirts. And on one of the back, back of one of them says, Christians in America are like Stepford wives. They have a goofy look and a phony smile. And one of the, one of the uh, nurses, she saw it and she started laughing. She started cackling. She said, that's so funny. It's a, see, that made me know that they were reading my shirts. I go under the shirts all the time. God doesn't love everybody. Christmas is pagan and all this kind of stuff. And they don't comment a lot. Of, but she couldn't keep from laughing at that one. 
She said, that's true, isn't it? I was telling a lady the other day that uh, we was talking about that, how Christians act so, act so self-righteous and so pious and so holy. And that's true. They act like that without being normal, without being say, hey, how you doing? Well, praise the Lord. God is wonderful. Isn't Jesus it's just wonderful? That's what slap. Get away from me. Shut up. Don't you just hate that? It's fake as a $3 bill. Now, let me tell you something. When you see something and you see a personality out there that's absolutely too good to be true, let me tell you a secret. It is every time. When you see these wonderful people in our society and everybody loves them, the Bible says all men drink iniquity like water. That means Obama. That means Bill Clinton. We know he does. He comes out in the paper. So does George Bush. So does all the presidents. So do you. So does everybody. But we as believers, God births himself in us and says that drinking iniquity like water is going to stop. You can believe that there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none good. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. And I said it to Dave again last night. I said, whenever you realize that the Bible is true about what mankind is like, and you realize that there's no good in a man's heart unless he has been born again, he has no good whatsoever. He's worthless. I don't care how nice they look. It's a lie. And this whole nation is under the siege of a lie. I didn't know what happened to Larry Jones. I knew that he was phony as a $3 bill. You remember Larry Jones? The nice little guy would feed the children on the TV. Just, uh, we're trying to feed all the children in the world. And let me tell you about this man. Had a lady sent me this. I should have looked at it myself on the internet. Well, let me tell you about him. You notice he's not on TV anymore? He looked like a nice little, just a little short man and had such a gentle voice. And, and he is promoting this worldwide Feed the Children campaign. When you see something that nice and there's no standing for truth, it's phony. If people do not somewhere speak of a daily cross, self-denial, denying self from the Bible, not saying let's go out here and feed some poor people and needy and we want to get you all out here and gather together to feed them. And there's no Christ in it. Don't ever give to charities like that. We give to the poor and the needy, but not through some charity. There's a, on the internet, I just put in to the internet, corrupt charities. I Google corrupt charities. It's unbelievable what's going on. The most outrageous charity in America is Larry Jones' Feed the Children. This reads like the young and restless. It reads like uh, as the world turns. It's unbelievable. Let me just read you a little bit about Larry Jones. You remember him, don't you? He looks like a nice little white guy, doesn't he? I keep saying, tell, tell a bunch of, tell white people, do you know that nice white guys are not that nice? Well, you're just bitter, Jim Brown, but you can tell a black man, do you know that nice white guys are not that nice? They go, well, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that right? <laughs> That's tr You know that nice white guys are not that nice, don't you? I'm talking to a big black man down here, Robert, in case you don't know who I'm talking to. Robert's one of the gentlest souls I know. Now, let me read this to you. More bad behavior has come to light after AIP hand, handed feed the, the, feed the Children its most outrageous charity award. It's the most outrageous charity by this watchdog group. After having worked three decades at the charity... Feed the Children founder Larry Jones was finally fired by its board last November after admitting to the authorizing of bugging three Feed the Children officials' offices. Jones filed a wrongful termination suit later that month, and the charity countered with a claim against 
Jones, including allegations that he took kicks back from vendors, did not tell the truth to, et to feed the children, bored about giving himself and his wife unauthorized raises, and had a large stash of porn magazines hidden in his office in his private area at the Christian Charity. This is the nice little white guy, Larry Jones. The charity's counterclaim alleged that Jones failed to disclose that he entered into an improper and unauthorized three-year contract with affiliated media group and that he was in business with a top executive of affiliated media group in another business venture. Uh, in a 1239-09 article, Jones told the Oklahoman that he was paid 10000 a month in sales commissions by affiliated media group because he recruited preachers. This is out of the Feed the Children Fund. He recruited preachers uh, to use the company for their own fundraising spots. That way he could get a percentage of it. And that, and that he helped his son get a job with affiliated. With affiliated. Food the Children paid affiliated $110 million from fiscal 2005 through fiscal 2007, according to August 22, 2008, board minutes filed in a prior lawsuit, Feed the Children versus Osteen. Since Jones was fired from Feed the Children, he has gone from being a defender to a critic of the charity. Last summer, Jones defended the Oklahoma City-based charity's purchase of a $1.2 million house in Los Angeles area to reach out to celebrities. and told the Oklahoman that his daughter lived and worked out of the house as intended. Yet in legal papers filed 1199 against Feed the Children, he accused his daughter of treating business residents in California as her personal residence. In the same lawsuit, he decided other employees who worked for him for many years when he was head of the charity, including accusing Feed the Children's uh, chief financial officer, Christy Thorpe, of being incompetent even though she had worked for him as Feed the Children's CFO in 2002. CBS News investigation exposed that Feed the Children was greatly exaggerating the amount of aid it was providing to victims. 21810 story, which included an interview with AIP's president, showed that while Feed the Children's website claimed that it was dividing was providing medical relief for 12,000 people, the three doctors that feed the children employed in Haiti could realistically only treat about 100 people a day. They said they were treating 12,000, treating 100. FC's, I'll just put FC for feed the children. FC's website also said that United Nations agencies are partnering with us to provide food and milk for the entire camp. But when CBS investigators visited the camp, they were told by Feed the Children field manager to Haiti, who had since resigned FC, that this was not true. CBS reported that more than two weeks after the quake struck, Feed the Children had not fed anyone. I'm just, all I'm trying to do is tell you, when it looks nice, it's not. The nicer something looks to me, the less I trust it. Woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets in Luke 6, 26. When it looks real nice, I don't trust it. When people look real nice without saying any truth, where somebody's not angry at them. If all the time I'm saying, hey, we got poor widow ladies, and we get offerings for the widow ladies, and 100%, 100%, goes to people who are in need. None of that goes into my pocket. Not a penny. When CBS reporter Cheryl Atkinson, during an on-camera interview, told Feed the Children the Director of Communications, Tony Sellers, that no food had been handed out, his response was, that does surprise me at this time, yes. That's all he said. And this thing goes on, the madcap antics of Feed the Children and Larry Jones, its founder and president for 30 years, may be coming to an end August 2009 after months of turmoil at the charity. Mr. Jones agreed to give up control of Feed the Children after he'd had these fights back and forth. Marcus Owens Esquire had been hired by Larry Jones to help him with 
failed scheme to fire FC's board and replace them with his hand-picked pastor board so Larry Jones could have unfettered control over Feed the Children. He could continue his freewheeling dominance of its affairs. He sure does look nice, though, doesn't he? And this thing goes on and on. FC emphasized feeding hungry children in its name and most of its fundraising and PR, yet food is not mentioned in the in the breakouts of non-cash property received in FC's fiscal 2008 tax form. These breakouts account for $736 million or 69% of the total non-cash items received consisting of $548.5 million or 83% medicine, 52 million and or seven percent books and the rest assorted necessities and so forth aip has long questioned the report value of fc's non-cash support it's saying that most of this stuff has been hidden by mr jones and i've had people call me and say i, I give to feed the children well, you're giving to a sleaze bag that's what you're giving to i don't believe in real nice people that don't know jesus there's not a nice, I don't care what color they are. I don't believe in them. I don't believe in Jesse Jackson. I don't know where the black community ever got the idea that he was black because he's not. He's white as the, the, it's Snow White out there, isn't he? Now don't believe these nice guys. Don't you believe them. If a man's not saying truth and being persecuted for it, there's nothing Christian about the man. I don't care what kind of charity he's in. Let me tell you a secret about, about, uh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret about telethons. I was in the music business. Every music group that's not famous is trying to break the telethon circuit. It's like a circuit out there. And if you think those musicians are doing that for free, no, they're not. When you watch Jerry Lewis' telethon, if you think, Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. and all those guys that went on there and all these modern entertainers that go on there today, if you think they're going on there for free, you are mistaken. They're getting huge amounts of those offerings coming in. When you break the telethon circuit, you can stay busy doing that and making lots of money. Even small-named group, if you can get an in with one of those people where they start featuring you, not only will you get in with them, it'll make you somewhat famous and you'll start making TV shows. It's a way to break in to the big time. And they pay everybody. And Jerry Lewis keeps a lot of that for himself. I doubt seriously if over 10% of what Jerry Lewis brings in goes to muscular dystrophy. Goes to overhead. That's what they're saying in here. There's Father John Ritter of Covenant House. Father John Ritter of Covenant House, he started taking people into his shabby little place and he was trying to, he was feeding all these people and even he was called an unsung hero by Ronald Reagan, was applauded by, first, by the first President Bush and Mother Teresa, but underneath all this public acclaim, Rumors had circulated of years of sexual relations between Ritter and residents of Covenant House. And he was putting money aside for young women and keeping people. William Aramoni of the United Way of America. Have you ever heard of United Way, hadn't you? Aramoni, uh, he was 22 years as president and CEO of United Way. 1992, Aramoni resigned amidst allegations that he siphoned money from the UWA through spinoff companies he helped to create. Aramoni was convicted on 25 felony counts and sentenced to seven years in prison for fraudulently diverting $1.2 million of the charity's money to benefit himself and his friends. And it goes on to say, Aramoni chose to use some of the charity's funds. For instance, he used UWA cash to woo a girl, Lori Vallisor, who was 17 years old when they began dating Aramoni was 59 he met Villasor while dating her slightly older sister both young women were added to UWA's payroll for his notoriously young girlfriend Aramoni spent 450,000 of the charity's money to purchase and lavishly furnish a New York condo 78,000 to show for her around New York City and 4,800 to renovate her home in Florida the couple vacation in Egypt uh, London, Las Vegas, Atlantic City. The New York Times published a testimony of Aramoni's former aide, 
Rena Duncan, with whom he had also had an affair, Duncan testified to falsifying Aramone's expense records for seven years so that he can charge the charity for things like champagne, flowers, and plane tickets for Villasor. And it goes on and on. I, all I'm trying to tell you, America's being seduced. Here's one on corrupt charities. This is about the American Cancer Society. Talks about how they use a 26%. At one time, the American Cancer Society spent only 26% of its national multi-billion dollar budget on actual medical research. What happened to that other 25%? <laughs> Overhead. And this, this goes on and on and on. Just go online, look up corrupt charities. I've got so much on how we've been conned. America is living in a con I'm smart enough to know in my 70s that what, don't believe everything you see. Don't even believe a part of what you see. And most of what you hear, it, it don't, we're not, I'm not touting any race. If you're black, don't believe all those black leaders. And when you're, I don't believe all these white leaders. Why do you believe the black leaders? I don't believe hardly any leaders. If you're, if you're popular enough to get a vote, all men have speak, speak well of you. It don't matter whether you're Romney. He got a big part of the vote, so he's popular in the world. Isn't that true? If you're popular in the world, you're an enemy of God. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says in James 4 and 4, you adulterers and adulteresses. He's not talking about literal adultery because he just got through talking about... Well, look over there in James. Look at this. In James 4. He is talking about the first part of the chapter. He's talking about this whole book is about men who are seeking money. That's what it's about and how they oppress the poor. Is that oppressing the poor to get people to give to the poor and you don't give it to them? I guess it is. I don't like people who steal from the poor. All right, look here in James. Four. And we're still talking about obedience to God. If you're obeying, why did these men corrupt these charities? Huh? Money. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's why they did it. All right. Why do men get corrupt? The flesh. They want what they want. A man will not be honest if he doesn't have Christ, if he's not born again, and he's not willing to listen to the truth. All those people you run into on the job, and they want to fight you about Christmas being pagan, they want to fight you about predestination, they want to fight you and say free will is true. Believe me, they will do anything. If God will pull his restraining hand off of their life, they will do any kind of evil. And guess what? So Such were some of you before God dealt with your heart. Weren't we? That's all men. Men basically are worthless. The only thing in the universe, the only thing in the universe that is good is God. That's it. The only man that is good, has any good in him, is the man that is the elect of God and God has birthed Christ in that man. And there's nothing in that man that is good other than Christ that's been birthed in him. And that's it. And that's God, isn't it? Christ in you, the hope of glory, is the only thing good in you. Everything else is worthless. And most of you are like me. You've been out there. You've done things you shouldn't have done and you've lived wrong. And you got involved in things you didn't think you'd get involved in. Has anybody done that? Sure you have. Now, he says here, this whole book is talking about how the rich oppress the poor. I'm not going to go through it. I'm just going to, the whole book. And he says, from whence come wars and fightings among you Come they not hence even of your own lusts? Now that's not the common word lust. That's the word hedone. H-E-D-O-N-E. -E. 
a hedonistic person is a person who believes they can live in any kind of sensual desires. No matter how lascivious, no matter how depraved it is, if it feels good, do it. That's what they believe. Now, who is James talking to here? Unbelievers? There's not one word of this book written to vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. This book was written to God's people. So he says, I'm talking to believers. He says, you believers, he says, how do these wars and fightings come about in the church? He said, they come about because, he says, there's fightings among you. Come they not hear even of your lust that war in your members? He says, you lust. Now that word there is the word epithumeo. Epi, T-H-U-M-E-O. Now we're talking about being deceived. We're talking about planos. Every time you find the word deceived, we're talking about this word planos because it is a form of planos or planeo. It means to be an imposter, one who pretends. The man that leads you away from faith pretends to be a truth-sayer, and they are soothsayers. They're saying soothing things. And they're seducing by being an imposter by leading people away. Now, the Bible tells us, he says, let me give you a verse before I go any further. He says, you lust and have not, and kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. Now, he says, you lust. If you'll notice, lust or epithumia, to breathe hard after and to long for that which is forbidden, epithumia or epithumeo, that means to long for that which is forbidden. Long for forbidden. Now, he's saying, James is saying here that believers can have a longing in their flesh for that which is forbidden for you to long for. It don't just it can mean a woman or a man, but it also can mean a car or things or stuff or money or recognition or when's somebody gonna pay me attention? When's my turn coming? Has anybody felt that way? Well everybody's felt that way. That is longing for self is what it's longing for. If you I don't know how to say this. I'm, if you want to either lift yourself up and say, listen to me, sing, watch me, watch me catch a pass, watch me throw a football, watch me dunk a basketball, watch me play a guitar, watch my sales ability, watch me build a company, watch me. If you do that, that's pride. If you say, Poor me, woe is me. I'm pitiful. Everybody pay attention to me. Did you know that's the same kind of pride as raising yourself up and trying to be pitiful about yourself? You're just looking for attention either way. It don't matter what, how you do it. It's as much pride to be going around pitiful as it is to go around lifting yourself up. It's nothing but self, isn't it? That's all it is. I want you to, let me show you a verse here. Over here in Ephesians, as one fellow used to come here, said Ephesians. Let me show you this in Ephesians 4. In Ephesians 4, now we're going to come back to James. We're going to show what Anytime you find the word deceive or a form of the word deceive, now we're talking about leaving the faith and being seduced into the doctrines of devils by an imposter. The only way you can be deceived is by somebody that looks like a Christian, 
They look good on the outside. Man looks at the outward appearance. The Lord looketh at the heart. If you, I've said this to some. I've even said it to Dave a bunch of times because I've spent a lot of time with him. I've said, if you can realize, let me say this real slow. And I've said this to you before, but I don't know if you get it. If you can realize that man is as corrupt as God says, that he drinks iniquity like water, that's the bank president. That is your pharmacist. That, I don't care how nice they are. That is your mother. That's your father. That's your brothers. That's your sister. That's you. Unless God has birthed Christ in you and he's been working on you for years to get rid of that outer man. That is everybody. That's the president. That's senators. That's company owners. That's the nicest people you can think of. Can you think of any nice people? Some real, real sweet. They just don't ever cuss and they don't want to drink. And they just don't ever say any bad words about anybody. And they talk so soft and gentle all the time. Can you think of anybody in your life like that? Let me tell you a secret. They're phony. If a person never loses their temper, if they never show that they're human, they're not real. They're made out of plastic. They're probably a Stepford wife, I imagine. Let me tell you, there's no such human being, is there? You ever get angry? Well, now, you don't act like it when we see you, Robert. You're always just a nice guy, gentle soul. Yeah, I know you do. You know why I know you do? Because there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to me. And God has revealed to me how I am, and he's revealed my heart to me, so I know how Robert is. I know how Ken is. I know how you are because I know how I am. And anybody that tries to, to, tries to come on to you that they're real super nice without Jesus involved in their life, without any tribulation, and everybody likes them, they're trying to sell you a bill of goods. And the more you can realize the Bible is true when it says none seeks after God. All men drink iniquity like water. There's none good, not one. Have you noticed that these verses that we use to say why God had to predestinate his family, that's the same thing that goes along with the doctrine of the devil. Did you notice that? If there's none good, the doctrine of the devil is being sold to the American public as nice people and nice, and we're all nice, and you've got your religion, and you're a Baptist, and I'm a Church of Christ, and he's a Catholic, but let's hold hands since we all believe in Jesus. Those people behind the scene, they're snakes. Wait till they get home to their wife. Wait till they get home to their husband. That is not human, is it? And you know what? Telling this to believers might help you to understand, I didn't know everybody else was like me. Well, yeah, they are. The Bible says it's common to all men. When you begin to realize that, you don't expect if the world gives you something good, you say, well, that's gravy. But if they do you bad, you say, that's what they're supposed to do. And you quit getting angry at the world and trying to get revenge because you realize that's the world. And that helps you in your growth to understand that nice people out there are supposed to be wicked and evil. And my experiences in the music man, it's the nicest guys in the world. I knew a lot of them. People say, if you can't get along with him, you can't get along with me, anybody, because he's a wonderful guy. And he was a crook. I had some deals with him. But he always smiled all the time. Hi, I'm a famous singer, and I'm somebody. And Hey, is everybody loves me. Don't trust that ever. Don't trust Bill Gaither and all those singers there on the TV. You can't trust that. I knew a lot of those guys when they cussed it like sailors, when they had all kinds of affairs with women, and you see a Bill Kaith, their infomercial, and they're all going, we all love Jesus. And nobody ever gives a testimony about, I used to live like a heathen 40 years ago when Jim Brown was in gospel music. I used to live like a heathen. I want to say that God has dealt with my heart. You'd never hear any of them give that, yet they were all that way when they're young. And the only reason they're not that way now, they're too old to chase women now. Or they're about to got one foot in the grave. 
Don't trust anybody that nice if they're not born again and doesn't have Christ inside. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying don't place your trust. Expect the worst when it happens. Because it's going to happen. And that way you can say, well, they were supposed to do that to me. I guess I'll have to watch out when I get around for them from now on. I'll try to stay away from them. And God's using them as swords in his hand to cut his people down. And make us behave ourselves. I've got a track over here that says being kind is not nice. Because kind and nice are at opposite ends of the universe. Kind is the word, crest. the goodness of God leads to repentance. It's the same word, crestatos, or crestates. That's the word kind. It means to be useful. Useful. Nice is the French word, nisquere. That is the word nice. That's our word nice. It comes from nay and skier. Nay means no. Nay means no. Skier means knowledge. That's our word science. It means knowledge. When a person acts nice, like Larry Jones, when he acts nice, he is acting nice like he has no knowledge of what's going on. I'm just a nice guy. I'm just Billy Graham. And I just preach the gospel, and I've never, I've never slept with a woman, any other woman in my life besides my wife. I've heard him say that. And I'm just nice. And can you see how nice I am and how I don't have hardly any sin in my life and I never have? Billy Graham's got enough pride to put him in hell. You actually think a man is that? What he's doing is he is these people that act nice and they're putting a con on the American public. They're playing dumb. That's all they're doing. Boy, we need to get that in our head. Why do you think I emphasize it all the time? I was in the music business. I was in real estate. Don't you believe when you start talking to real estate? Hi there. Well, it's so good to see you. I've been wanting to see you for a long time. Oh, they, your wife is beautiful and and she looks like a mud fence, and, and, your, and your kids are so sweet, and they're jumping all over the office. Those are cute little kids, and the, and the real estate agents want to whack them in the head. Did you know that when somebody leaves the office like that, they go into another office? I'd kill those kids if it's mine. Then they're polishing them up. That's a con. You're going to buy a car, and the guy says, it's good to see you, Mr. Brown. I got a car that's for you. How do you know? <laughs> My wife will tell you I've stopped them. I've said this before, but I stopped one down here at Rivergate one time. I found a car that's you, and I said, don't you talk to us like that. It's like I would slapped him in the face. He went, oh, what did I say, Mr. Brown? I said, don't talk to me that way like I'm some dumb kid. I said, oh, man, I'm an old man. I don't like to be conned and talk too slick. And from then on, he talked real nice. Nice. <laughs> he, pretended that he pretended to be a better sinner than he was pretending before. Uh, he talked straighter to us after I said that. I said that to a kid up here in Gallatin. I said, don't talk to me that way. Well, sir, what did what, what, what I do? What? what, what uh, I said, I don't like a con. That slick talk, I don't like it. Just tell one of them that. You won't believe how they change. It's like you just slap them, just like that. They, they'll change their tune fast. Now, I want you to look over here at Ephesians 4. We're still talking about, about lust. Well, let me show you something, what I'm doing. I use this verse, I use this verse as a key verse. Let me show you what I do when I'm studying. We're studying 
being seduced by doctrines of devils. Devil, daemon, meaning distributing fortunes. The way planos is the word seduced. The, and we're talking about 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Planos. And I've got several words that are this word, deceive. I'll put them up. We have several words for deceive. I've got the word planos. I have the word planeo. And I have the word plane. It looks like plain, but it's plane. And I have the word planetes. And planetes means a wanderer. Wanderer. And a planet is a wandering, it's a wandering body out there in space that has no light. And that's what, that's what a deceiver, deceiver is. It's, so what I do, if you have the earth, planets, stars are out here. Our sun is a star. They've got they're big balls of gas, and they're on fire. When you look at stars, every star you see out there is a sun, and every sun is a star. It, when we're looking out through the sky, we're looking at light that's been coming, from, and you look at that, those stars over there, those big balls of gas, we're watching light coming to the earth from some star, and that star is maybe 20 million miles from Earth, and we're seeing the light from that star. Some of the stars we see may have burned burn out for a million years. And we're seeing the light that's still headed that way. When, one of, when a star explodes, it becomes a nova or a supernova. And it's the brightest thing in the universe other than a quasar. A quasar is an explosion... It's actually a sucking in of billions of stars into this quasar. It's devouring billions of stars, shooting a flame into space a trillion miles. But when you're talking about our solar system, we have, in our solar system, you've got Jupiter and you've got Uranus and you've got Saturn and you've got Venus and all of these bodies out here that have no light to them. They are planets. Every star is a sun. And it's on fire and it's flaming. Flaming. Every star is a sun. And it has a flame to it. So the planets are wandering in an orbit and some of them are wandering around one another and you've got all of these you got all these little, small, uh, when you see Saturn with its rings around it, that's just, that's chunks of ice and, and uh, asteroids of some sort in an orbit around Saturn. And Saturn is in its orbit, and Jupiter is in its orbit, and the moon is orbiting around the earth, and the earth is orbiting around the sun. And all these heavenly bodies that have no light, these are, these are planets. And they're wanderers. That's where we get the word planet from the word planetes, a wanderer. It's amazing how you see the nuances of the Greek language. And a deceiver is one who makes you wander and leads you off. And it's an imposter and leads you into an orbit where you don't need to be. Takes you off into darkness. So what I do when I'm studying this, here's what I do. I take every verse that has the word planet, planos in it. I take every verse, and I, and I take every verse that has planeo in it, and every verse that has plane, and every verse that has planetes, and I take these and see how they're affected. If I want to know what a deceiver is, 
And you've got other words for a deceiver. You have the word apate. Now, apate, then you have the word apatao, A-P-A-T-E-O. And you have the word exapatao. Now, all, every time you'll find usually the word deceive, deceiver, or you'll find words that are connected with this type of word, you're going to have, or seduce, it'll usually be one of these words here. Now, let me give you a rundown. This word apate means delusion. When you're deluded, you think you're seeing something that you're not seeing. When you see Larry Jones advertising for Feed the Children, little short white guy, real nice guy, you think you're seeing something you're not seeing. When you see Billy Graham, who doesn't believe in predestination, doesn't believe Christmas is pagan, doesn't believe Easter is pagan, never talks about a daily cross, never talks about death of self or self-denial, you think you're seeing a Christian. You think you're seeing something you're not seeing because he looks good outwardly, had a big tone to his voice when he's young. He talked about Jesus and God and salvation and accept Christ and pray the sinner's prayer and come forward tonight. And all that's not true. You think you're seeing something you're not seeing. You say, Jim, am I supposed to be skeptical of the world? Yes. We're living in a world that don't believe God. Are you skeptical of that? Some of you have got in-laws that your brother-in-law is a real nice guy, but you know him behind the scenes. Have you ever had somebody like that in your family? And he ain't what the world thinks he is. Nobody is what they look like they are. They're playing dumb. Now, you take every one of these words, this means delusion, or deceit, deceit. And this word, apatao, means to cheat. It's a derivative of apate, to cheat, or delude, or deceive. And this word, exapatao, means to just completely deceive. Putting the X on there means completely deceive or to seduce wholly or beguile. To beguile, guile, guile is the word dolos. It means to trick by the way you act, the way you talk. Talk soft and easy and say, well, I love everybody. I'm a Christian. And what do you mean? I believe in free will, Jim Brown. I really believe that God loves everybody. Huh? Yeah. God loves us all, doesn't he? God loves everyone. I just want to tell you how it's all... Have you ever seen those charismatics? It's about you and this is your day. Isn't that what... Isn't that Benny Hinn's title on his show... This is your day. This guy across town goes on TV with Joel Osteen. He said, it's about you. It's about self. This is self's day. They tell you it's about self all the time. And they look nice. Has anybody seen the guy across town that comes on with Joel Osteen? Evidently, he went to Houston. And he says, and it's your day. And boy, he sure does look like a nice guy. Trust him as far as I could pick him up and throw him. You wouldn't trust him. Do I trust the guy that says, don't you leave till you see me? Found out he had a record down in Florida. Now he had to go off TV because he's cheating on his wife and he got caught with a gun and all this stuff. Didn't he look nice? He did, didn't he? Did I trust him before he got caught? No, I didn't trust him. I'd say, that guy's a phony. All you have to do is look, look at something that's too good to be true and you can say it's a phony every time and it is because it doesn't live in reality. Doesn't say I'm a sinner. I'm struggling, folks. I didn't say you're supposed to be staying your sin. I said you're supposed to be agonizing over it and struggling with it. Say, Jim, I'm struggling. Anybody who won't say that is lying because they're pretending they don't have any sin. And then you get into the words 
plane means fraudulent. Plane means fraud. If you defraud somebody, don't you talk to them and say, I'm going to make you rich. I was in music business, and man, I knew some con artists in that business. If they walked in, you might as well take your billfold out of your pocket and hand it to them and say, look, I know you're going to get it later anyway. There was a guy named Bill Starnes, music. I mean, super con artist. Just best of the best. He made you feel wonderful. I've told the story before, but I was down getting a haircut back in the late 60s down in a barber shop in, down in East Nash, or down in Englewood. I think it's Tommy's barber shop down there, up behind East High School. And I used to get my hair cut there, and, and I was sitting in there, and George Jones and Tammy Lynette walked in, and I heard her talking about Starnes this and Starnes that, and I had known that this guy had managed them because he told us at one time he did. And I looked over at Tammy. I said, you're talking about Bill Starnes? And she started laughing. She said, she started laughing and said, isn't he good? I said, I have never seen anybody like him in my life. She, and Tammy said, you know, you could give Bill a dime for a phone call. That's all a phone call cost, cost back then. She said, you could turn him loose in New York City with a short sleeve shirt and a pair of jeans in a blizzard, and he'll have... $10,000 in his pocket in less than two days and be driving a new Cadillac. I said, I don't have any doubt about that. One time he went out and leased some equipment, then he took it and sold it. One time he went into a bank in Sour Lake, Texas, told me the story about it, asked the bank president how he would rob the bank if he was robbing it. And Bill was such a charmer. And the bank president told him all about how he had robbed it, and then Bill went home and come back and robbed the bank. And then he went to prison, and within three months, he's given rehabilitation speeches for the warden in Seagoville, Texas. Some of these guys are so good. And if you think he can make you feel good, he can make you feel like a million dollars in just a few minutes. Now, he wouldn't con me. These guys, when they come in, there's this, I, I'm like a uranium detector. When one of them walks in, and with that super charm, it's like, don't anybody believe him. He's making us feel good. Get away. Get away. <laughs> you ever know anybody like that? They're crooks. 100% of the time. Billy Graham is a crook. Charles Stanley is a crook. Kenneth Copeland's a crook. Everybody knows that. Benny Hinn's a crook. Sometimes, you know, that when you are head of a big financial organization like a bank, do you know how much opportunity you get to foreclose on people and take their money? Do you know that's how banks, bankers get rich? Foreclose on this one and that, and they rip people constantly, and they have no compassion whatsoever. Real estate agents would do that. Back during the early 80s when, when they had lots of loans out there that were, they were non-qualifying, you could just assume them by giving somebody their equity. You could make every kind of deal in the world and there were so many people having their houses stole from them. It's unbelievable. And I can sit down and show you how to do that with non-qualifying assumptions. Just rip people right and left. And boy, I'd just get furious when I'd see it happening. And people writing those no money down things. Some guy's got $40,000 equity in his house and the house is worth 85000 And then somebody comes up and says, they write a contract, I'll give you, you borrow $10,000 on your equity and we're in a recession and houses are not selling. You give me the 10000 on your equity. I'll give you what you're asking. And then I'll give you, you give me a balloon and in five years, I'll pay you the rest. You can take that $10,000 and walk away. And people that are desperate to make loans, they'll do that. Desperate to sell their house because they're being transferred somewhere in Wisconsin in the spring and they have to get rid of their house and they'll make any kind of deal. And I saw people get ripped all the time by real nice, smiley-faced real estate agents. I said smiley-faced. Oh, smiley face, yeah. Now, whenever 
Now, this word planos means a rover. And that's what a planet is. It's a rover or a wanderer. A rover or a trap. Or an imposter or one who misleads, a misleader. All the world is being misled by people. By, they're being led, misled by actors who act nice. I don't trust nobody that acts nice that don't talk about Jesus or God and get persecution. Never trust that ever, anytime. Not the, even the 18-year-old girl who's a checker down there at, at the supermarket. Not the little old lady that's, that's working down at the department store. Never believe somebody that's real nice. Well, well, I have my beliefs. Don't trust that if they don't want to talk about Jesus and talk about truth. They're, they're untrustworthy. Then you have the word planeo. Planeo means to cause to roam. To cause to roam from safety... From safety or to be out of the way. And the way is narrow, isn't it? And that's the daily cross, to be out of the way. And there's a narrow way and a broad way. And when you go to the doctrine of the devil, you go to the broad way, don't you? Don't you? Where you can live the way you want and have the things you want in the flesh. It means to deceive or to err, to seduce, and to roam from truth is what it means. That word planeo means to roam from truth. Roam from truth. So in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, and they'll give heed to seducing spirits and their doctrines of devil. Seducing spirits is the spirit that causes you to roam from truth and go seek self. That's what it is. That's why you have to deny self. Now, I want you to look over here in Ephesians. How much time do I have, Mike? Huh? I'm not getting started where I want to go. Now, look over here in Ephesians 4, and then we'll go back to James 4. I don't know if you know how much studying there is to do on this. You take every one of these words, every time it's mentioned, you take every time one of these words and every time it's mentioned and take its a synonym, a pate, and every time it's mentioned in the Bible, every time it's mentioned, and find out what it is that deludes you and leads you away from faith and takes you to the doctrine of self or the doctrine of the devil. Now, do you know how long it takes to look up every one of these words? Every time it's mentioned and how it affects us. It doesn't mean you'll have to study this to know how to be seduced. This is telling you when you are seduced, what evil actions are taking place in your mind and causing you to be led away. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Look over here in Ephesians. Ephesians 4. This is one of the words for plane or planeo. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. And Paul, through this chapter, is talking about the winds of doctrine that bleed the church away in verse 14. And he said, by the slight of men. Well, let me read that verse 14. Henceforth we be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with ev carried about. That's like being led away. Planeo or plane or planetes. With every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. Men are using slight to carry you after winds of doctrine. The word slight is the word cubia. Cubia comes from the word cube. We got our word cube, C-U-B-E from that. And that word means a die or dice. And the writers say it has the idea 
of switching dice and put loaded dice in there. Make to fool you and think that you've got a chance to be rich when they've got it set against you. It's just like going to Las Vegas and taking $1,000. Do you think when you start gambling, you're going to win? Gambling was set up for the house to win. One person out of a million will win a jackpot. Or one person out of 20 million or 30 million. Do you think that's you? You're really deceived when you think it is. They've got the thing set for the house to win. What's amazing, if you start learning to count cards and you're playing blackjack, and you can count the number of cards just because you're extremely intelligent, they realize that you're a card counter and they will, they will blackball you from that casino and from every casino in town. And they'll put the word out and your picture out there and you're not allowed to go over there and play blackjack just because you're good at it. It's set up for the house to win you're supposed to lose. This is exactly the way the world is when you're being tricked. You're set up in the world to lose unless you can be used by some man to make him some money. You say, Jim, is this realistic? It's, yes, it is. You cannot have a society built like ours on money and power and things and stuff in the TV and the magazines and somebody's not trying to con you. You know nobody talks about this. A lot of old people know it. But they don't yet tell young people they think they won't believe it. But the Bible teaches this. When they look too good to be true, they are exactly that. Then he says, By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, panorgia, trickery, by trickery, whereby they are lying in wait to deceive you. That word deceive is the word plane. They're lying in wait to lead you away. If you think everybody likes you whenever they're trying to sell you an insurance policy, as much as they pretend to like you, they don't. I've had people come into my house to replace windows and doors. Hey, you're Jim, I really love you. Yes, I love your message. I love your word. Well, that's wonderful. They don't love the word. They got a client on their hand. They're going to sell me something. They leave and never come back. And I'll preach them into the ground when they're in my den and I don't expect to see them back and they'll go into eternity and end up in hell one day. And God will be glorified at their destruction. Then he talks on down here how you'll be led away. In verse 17, This I say and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened. It'll be darkened by these seducing spirits when you're deceived and led away. Being alienated from the life of God. When you are seduced and deceived. When he says. There, they lie in wait to deceive. Plane, it connects every thought after this. Unless the thought has changed somewhere. And the thought has not changed. So you'll, your understanding will be dark. You'll be alienated from the Christian life, a godly life of living in truth through the ignorance that is in you. If you notice, remember Jesus said, men err not knowing the Scriptures, and he used a form of the word plane. The reason you will err is because you don't know enough about the Bible. That's why you'll be led away. Because it'll sound good and, and the guy will say, I'm a Christian too. I'm a charismatic. You just believe it and say it with your mouth. Come on and join our church. And they'll tell you to unload your money into the offering plate and then you can start expecting a good things from God. Or go look at your mailbox every day and expect a blessing from God. You ever heard that? What baloney. What are they going to do when the great crash comes? Go to your, say, go to your mailbox. Uh, if you can get out to your mailbox with all the, uh, all the military uh, militia in the streets because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling. He's saying, you're going to be past feeling. You're going to be apogao. You're going to be apathetic when you listen to these winds of doctrine when you're seduced. 
You're not going to care about the doctrine of God, death to self, daily cross, self-denial. When you fall away, that's what happens. We've had a lot of people come here fall away who being past feeling have given themselves over. He's talking to believers at Ephesus. You'll give yourselves over to lasciviousness. Aselgia, A-S-E-L-G-I-A. G-E-I-A. Aselgia means wantonness, all kinds of... He's saying, believers, when you're seduced, you'll become wanton. You'll be very wicked in your living. And he says, to work all uncleanness with greediness. You're going to get greedy when you're deceived and led away. Then he says, but ye have not so learned Christ. Learned. Remember, we're talking about teaching the doctrine of Christ earlier. We're talking about obeying God. You haven't learned Christ to obey Him living this way. But he says, this will happen when you're deceived. Plane, planeo, planetes, and you start to wander away from God. This is what happens. If so be you have heard Him and have been taught by Him. Remember, taught, teach, learn, obey. When you see these words, think of the other words. And what is it you've learned as the truth is in Jesus? You learn truth, don't you? You learn to take the cover off. Aletheia. That's the word truth. Take off the cover. Aletheia comes from lanthano, means to lie hid. And placing the alpha in front of that negates the word. It means not to hide anything. Tell the truth. Live in it. Look at yourself and say, I have to live in truth. Look at verse 22. Then put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, the outer man of Romans 7. You have an inner man and an outer man. It's the outer man that will be deceived and led away. Put off the old man, the former conversation. That means your way of living that you lived, and a strophe. It means behavior. Put off the behavior of the old man, which is corrupt. Now here's, watch this real close. Which is phthero. Which is corrupt. Phthero, it's rotten. The old man is rotten concerning spiritual things according... Now notice, I'm going to read this real slow. The old man is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Now what you do, this word deceitful is the word apate. Deceitful lusts. So he is saying, lust deceives you lust is deceitful now what you do you take the word lust and run it everywhere you find it in the bible and it'll tell you everything that results in your deception in the scripture and remember apate is a synonym for planos or planeo or plane, or planetes, and it, imposters will lead you away. And this whole chapter is about deceitful man preaching and leading the believer away. So what I do, I'll take, I've taken the word lust everywhere it's mentioned. Epithumia. This is the word epithumia. And everywhere it's mentioned, you can take that word and it'll tell you what lust results in to the believer. It'll tell you what, how it affects you and what, what it is in the affections of it, what leads you into lust. 
It's because you're being deceived and you're deluded and you're being led away by something that looks like what it's not. I, you say, Jim, you sound awful skeptical. I'm skeptical of everything that doesn't have the new birth in it. And if it has the new birth in it, you can't, don't call these people Christians at these Baptists and Church of Christ and Pentecostal churches. If they don't believe predestination, death to self, daily cross, self-denial, if they want to argue about Christmas being pagan after you give them the whole story, they have twisted the Word of God and they're deceiving themselves. And you're going to find the Bible says that, that men deceive themselves because they like smooth words. How did Paul say a man is deceived? By good words and fair speeches. Didn't he say that? That's what deceived people. Don't, you say, Jim, that makes the world miserable. No, it makes you miserable living in the world, but it don't make you miserable because we're living in Christ. When you face the truth the way it actually is in the world, don't let people con you and smooth talk you and smooth you over and make it and stroke you all the time. Oh, well, we're all wonderful and we're all Christians and come on to our Christmas party. We're just going to go down here and have some light drinks and you don't have to drink while you're with us. We're just going out of the club to see this singing group and they're so good. Don't be deceived. If you go down there and start rubbing elbows with them, you're going to be deceived. So, when he says here, lusts are deceitful. Lusts will lead you away. It will delude you thinking, I can fulfill my flesh after all. I'm, I'm a free man in America. I'm a free woman. I have a right to do whatever I want to do. Well, I'm not obligated to God to any great degree. I go to church and I, I can kind of be loose once in a while. No, you can't. Because you get further and further and further away from God. So he says, the lusts are deceitful. Go back over here to James 4. If lusts are deceitful, which he says they are, he goes, on to, he goes on to say, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So if you're deceived... You're not walking righteous in what I do there. I'll take off on the word righteous and I'll see if I'm deceived. I'll look at all the words for righteous and then I'll say I'm not doing righteousness. And I'll look up to all the words for godliness and I'm not living godly if I'm deceived. Now go back over here to James 4. And I've got a whole list of all the places where the Bible's talking about going after lust. The Bible says lusts are deceitful and they're corrupt. Remember that word corrupt? Fathero. I go in and I find out that the mind is corrupt. The mind is, is fathero. And dia fathero means utterly corrupt or rotten. A man's mind gets rotten when he is deceived. Look back over here in James. I wish I had enough time to give you all the places. I, am I out of time? I'll have to come back and resume this. But he says over here in James, he's just to give you it real quick. He says in James, the fourth chapter, he says... You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. He's talking to believers. You fight and war and have not because you iteo not. You don't bow to the will of God asking. You ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. The word amiss is kakos. It's the word evil. You ask for evil. You ask for the flesh. That you may consume it upon your own lusts. You're wanting to consume things, and that word lust is the word hedone, and hedone would be a synonym for epithumia. That's why they translated to both of them lust. You adulterers and adulteresses know you not that friendship of the world. He's talking about when you lust, you're friends with the world, and you're an enemy of God. So when you deceive, you become friends with the world. You're not going to be led away and deceived by a nice, good, 
Bible-believing Christian predestinationist who believes that God loves uh, only his family and he hates, he loved Jacob and hated Esau. You're not going to be deceived by that. You're going to be led astray in the world when you're seeking things and stuff by your own lust. If I actually took all the words lust, it'll show you all of how lust affects you, how it chokes and drowns you as you go after money and things like that, you, and you murder in your heart. You get involved in every... When you're deceived, you get in every kind of sin imaginable, and men will depart from the faith at the end of time. And I see men just immersed in lust because they're listening to smooth-talking con artists. Don't listen to nobody that talks smooth. I'm not saying don't talk gentle and kind to one another. We talk kind to each other all the time. Nice is a con. Let me put it this way. Acting nice is a con. Nice is no knowledge. That means you, do, you can be nice about, about nuclear physics. So I don't know nothing about that. You can be nice about that. I don't know. If somebody asks me a question about the Bible, I don't know. I can be real nice about it. I can be no knowledge. I say, I don't know. But to act like I don't know what's going on around me, that's a con. Don't think that people that act nice are as dumb as they act. They're not. Nobody's that dumb. The only time you're that dumb is if you're if you've got Down syndrome or something like that. Nobody is dumb as the world acts. And behind the scenes, if you go into everybody's homes, you can see fighting and fussing. Me and Mary will be riding down the road, and I'll say, every face that we see flashing by us has got a thousand problems that they don't know how to fix. That's every family. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and for truth. Lord, cause the sheep here to learn to face the truth about the Word of God and about the world. Not that we're out there condemning the world because those that believe not are condemned already. But Lord, so we can get a clearer picture of how we're supposed to be living and facing the truth. God, we praise you for everything and glorify you for your Word. We pray that you'll open up many doors for the ministry. And God, I'll say the truth. You've already given me enough boldness to do that. I'll say it regardless of the cost. You have put that in me. And Lord, I pray you'll put it in the believers here. Cause them to mature and grow up in faith. And we'll give you praise and glory for all things. In Christ's name, amen. Boy, I didn't even get started on this. There's so much to it. Jason. Night. Night. Doing good. Well, I hope I'm just trying to let get people to see reality, you know. I see it. But you know, being a black man in America, it's easier for you to see than nice white people. Because you can see the society for what it is. I'm not patronizing you. That's the truth. I believe minorities in America can see the truth better than most white people. Because they can't see the...
Barnes and Noble. Well, she came to see you. But I, I went to, uh, oh, I seen it at Barnes and Noble.